There we, ah, there we go. We're live. Yes. Hi. Okay. Everybody yeah, needs to be professional cool. now. <laughs> <laughs> I look. Do I look professional? Definitely. Hundred yeah. percent. Oh no! No, I've got the delay going on because I've got the thing happening over here. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> So how should we start off where we were uh, hoping to have a bit of a informal live stream session, uh, closing off the end of the year, like many people, I think in the, in the kind of like um, industry were taking a couple of weeks off, maybe. I mean, you know, the rest, the most of the team is anyway. So yeah. for for us, this is kind of like the end of the year and um, we've accomplished a lot. So we thought, well, why not do kind of a live stream, talking a little bit about it, introducing members of the team. You know, maybe we should go around. And Ada is, uh, Ada is on a train, but she's gonna be joining us shortly as well. So uh, why don't we go around and just say who we are first and foremost, right? So uh, I'm I'm Dan. I'm uh, I don't know what I am. <laughs> I guess I'm the manager of the team. I'm also doing uh, a lot of web standards work, and I've been doing a lot of work um, in ecosystem projects on web for ages and, and, and I've been, uh, and yeah, I'm a web person, uh, an open web advocate, um, as one might say, or as I've put on my Twitter bio recently, an open web curmudgeon. Um, so, uh, I'll hand over to Laura. Hi, everybody. Um, besides uh, in introduce ourselves, I don't know who's watching, but you can put who you are also in the chat. <laughs> yes, you. Hello, Kenneth. It's like, are you able to see? Yeah, you should. I can see. Trying to test. Um, yeah, I can see us. And the live stream is working on YouTube. Yeah, I can also yeah. see us on YouTube. Yeah, not sure what Kenny is um, asking. OK, so uh, yeah, my name is Dauda. Um, actually, uh, I'm part of the team of Web Dev Rail Relations at Sans Internet. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm also Santa <laughs> today. <laughs> so, yeah, I will um, give the word to Lola. Hi, I'm Lola. Um, I am new into the DevRel space. Um, well, officially, I have done some like DevRel stuff um, unofficially. Um, and yeah, I am, I guess I've been here for like three months now at Samsung. Um, and I don't know what to say about me. I write things, I podcast, I am trying to learn how to play the piano. That's going okay. <laughs> um, we'll see if I become like an amazing musician by December 31st. Um, and yeah, that's me. Cool, and additionally, we have Kevin who might have been having trouble with internet. And we have Ada, who's just joining now. Hi. Yeah, I'm Ada. I do lots of VR and AR stuff. I'm and you're on the train. On a train due to some sunscreen. Ada's running a bit late, unfortunately. And this is probably part part of uh, the um, wonder of 2020. So, you know, <laughs> um, but uh, Kevin should be rejoining as well at some point. Okay, and we'll let him um, introduce himself when he does. Um, so yeah, we're also, and I'm keeping an eye on people's comments as well as we're, as we're streaming here. 
Um, we're experimenting with this new platform and with the new way of working and uh, as everybody has been this year. Um, maybe we can start off with, um, not since you're the new person, Lola, you could start off talking a little bit about what you've been working on since you've been here. Yeah, so um, I've had my fingers in a few different pies. Um, I think mainly it's been some WebRTC stuff and um, a globe, the Global Goals project that we've been um, working on <clears throat> with, uh, that I've been working on with Laura and the uh, SRA team, the American team. Um, and so, yeah, with the WebRTC stuff, that was kind of like my first foray into that world um, and straight out the gate. <laughs> Um, I built an internet connected phone, which I did write a blog post about and a tutorial for as well. Um, WebRTC is interesting because it is quite complex um, and complicated in many areas, um, but it is also really interesting. It's cool to be able to build something that you can actually like talk to someone else that is not on your network, that is not in your surrounding area, is not connected to you by Bluetooth. Literally, it's like the internet. And um, so that was really fun. And the global goals um, stuff I've been doing with Laura has been about um, taking the global goals mobile application and making it into a PWA. And Laura's done like a bulk of that work already. And so what I was doing was adding a new endpoint, integrating Stripe payments, web payments. Um, and also using the payment request API, which was an interesting um, problem as well. Um, and I had never used the web payments API before, so it was fun to get my hands stuck in that too. Um, Stripe has a cool interface for it. <clears throat> um, it works well enough. Um, and yeah, so those are the two main things I think I've worked on, unless there's something like I'm completely missing. Oh, and for the web payment stuff as well, I did do um, two blog posts about that. One is on Medium, on our Medium page, and another is on our Dev2 page as well. Um, oh, and I did do a project for the NSARS uh, movement, which was helping Nigerian developers find mentors. Um, and that actually didn't use any job, well, use a little bit of JavaScript, but it's mainly a Rails project. And I'm a Rails developer, that's my background, Ruby. So it was really nice to be like reunited with my first love. Um, and yeah, I think those are the main things I've worked on in the last two, three months. And I think one of the, the things that you touched on was the, um, well, what WebRTC, WebRTC has been such an important topic this year because of how everybody has been using the web. So everybody has jumped on to different streaming platforms. We're using a streaming platform, um, StreamYard, to do this stream right now. And everybody has been using different platforms. We've heard an awful lot about Zoom uh, this year, but obviously like pe people have been using all kinds of things. and. A lot of them are are powered by WebRTC, um, and it's been a I don't know topic of passion for me for a while, even before coming to Samsung, uh, trying to see how we can get more people, uh, more interesting use cases on WebRTC. We've been using the platform Whereby for the um, for for our standups for ages. Um, we all at in the W3C tag meeting uh, meetings that I'm uh, co-chairing. We use Jitsi, which is an open source WebRTC hub. But so many people are doing really creative things with WebRTC as well. It's not just about uh, connecting talking heads together, um, like uh, the conference um, half stack that we participated in earlier this year. I think Ada spoke. Um, they were using WebRTC to power that, um, you know, to, in, in the same way that, that this is kind of working, but also integrated with a chat and integrated with all the kind of kinds of things that you need when you're doing a conference, which I thought was really inspiring in terms of like um, 
how do you how do you conf how do you do tech conferences you know in 2020 during a pandemic right i think yeah, that's been yeah. one of the things that we've been struggling with and innovating around and you know putting a lot of our energy into is how do we how do we move from endeavorel where part of the work is going physically to places and standards where a lot of the work is going physically to places and meeting with people and having meetings and or giving presentations in person how do you transition over to fully fully online um fully virtual and and webrtc plays an important role there so yeah. it was exciting when when <coughs> lola when you were when you were developing your prototype and we managed to first we you were like, can you hear me? And I'm like, yes. And I felt like, <laughs> why not? <laughs> it really does like, not to, you know, blow big up my own head and like blow my own trumpet, but I kind of did understand the feeling of like stepping on the moon for the first time, that kind of like, oh my goodness, <laughs> <laughs> just about made it, you know? <laughs> um, but something I did want to say as well, just if, for those who may not know what WebRTC is or like why it's even useful. Um, in a nutshell, it's just another way to send data um, over the internet. Um, and what you're doing is usually typically when you are um, working with web applications, um, you're using a client and a server model. And so the client talks to the server the server sends back a response. And so you kind of have this request response back and forth between a client and a server. The WebRTC model is quite different and it more, more likely uses pairs. There, there are servers involved, there have to be simply because of um, that's the best way pairs can speak to each other, but it doesn't um, work in the same way as a client server model. And so what happens in WebRTC is that the pair will speak to the server, another peer will speak to the server. And then once that initial connection has happened to the server, there is no going back to the server. So from that initial connection, the peers just begin to speak directly to each other. Um, and so it's kind of like a peer to peer um, kind of network kind of situation going on. And there are things that make it complicated in terms of the kinds of servers that you need to use because they're not your typical um, web servers, they're special kind of servers for WebRTC requests and stuff, but that's essentially what it is. And so you can send, you can send video, you can send audio, but more interestingly, you can send binary data over WebRTC. And so really, really cool and interesting things can be done with the technology that isn't just like creating a video chat app, which though is also really cool and interesting because you get to, as Dan pointed out, like see someone else who is like, thousands of miles away from you. Um, so yeah, that was just in case those who were not clear what WebRTC actually is. Uh, for me, WebRTC is tied into the whole kind of like decentralized nature of what, we, what we're doing. Ideally, the web should enable decentralized services and federated services. Um, so yeah. Exactly. And I think in other parts of the world where um, internet connection is not as reliable, not as strong, um, that decentralization actually becomes really, really, really important. Being able to use people's devices as pairs, whether that's a mobile phone, a laptop or whatever, um, and being able to store data on those devices and then, you know, connecting when there's a more stable connection. So, yeah, with RTC, um, He's definitely interested in that realm too. How about you, Kevin? You want to um is your is your is your connection stable enough? You wanna tell us what you've been working on? <laughs> I've been I've been here watching you all talk and I was like stayed in the backstage and yeah. Um okay, well I've been working on Samsung Internet for what one year now soon mm. more actually it's, it's already been well a year and a half and a few months i think Ooh we need to celebrate that <laughs> very, yeah we should we should go out sometime yeah that's exactly <laughs> what i was gonna <laughs> propose <laughs> so yeah to just to talk a bit of uh, about me and uh, what i do at samsung 
Blockchain Internet. So, uh, so mainly this year I joined uh, as an intern and uh, I was uh, working on the advocacy part, like all of you, uh, writing blog posts, uh, working into some uh, progressive web apps, internal projects. I also worked on uh, One UI web. Um, it's uh, the One UI uh, uh, interface, but uh, for the web. And um, well, uh, yeah, at the at the at the at the in the mid of the year, I was proposed to stay in the team and continue to work with uh, uh, with you. And so I decided to stay, and uh, here I am. Uh, and uh, yeah, I kind of switched projects in the middle, uh, where I kind of oriented myself uh, more to the 5G tours project, where we design WebXR experiences uh, for a museum. Uh, and um, yeah, so this is what I've been working on this year, and uh, it's pretty exciting. It's very cool. Uh, it's um, inspiring to see the to see those uh, experiences take shape. So I don't know whether you feel confident enough about showing maybe a clip from one of the. Um, I, can, I can do that. Uh, yeah. This is an EU funded project that we're working on called Five G Tours. It's a uh, Consortium, um, and uh, just um, it's centered around. Well, at least some of the use cases uh, that we're working on are centered around this museum in Turin. Um, and the idea is to draw people into an interactive experience. Initially, uh, it was aimed at an experience that people could participate in while at the museum. And I think we've kind of pivoted uh, to uh, an experience that you can that you can be part of anywhere, um, and also participate on, in at the museum. But it's kind of this multi multi party um, experience, and being able to uh, be a part of the museum while not being there. No good. Thanks for all of that. And I should have started the stream. Uh, maybe Laura has to put it on. Uh, Laura, can you add it? Oops, you're muted, Laura. Stream directory. <laughs> you should share your uh, screen. This is the, the, the background behind the scenes. <laughs> I'm not able uh, to see your screen yet. Okay, let me try something else then. And while you're doing that, why don't we, do you want, we can come back to that when you're, when, when you, when good. The yes, I can see it now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, well, okay, so this is the use case we've been working on. We, uh, as Dan mentioned, this is part of uh, an European project. And, uh, well, we've done a quick demonstration uh, today and, uh, well, actually a few weeks ago as well, uh, showing where the your experience is. And, uh, well, I'll just play quickly through it. Uh, so, yeah, so basically the VR experience is, um, allowing multiple users connect and being able to visit a uh, room that is part of a museum uh, in, uh, in Greece, no, in Italy. And uh, basically they'll be able to experience the artworks on the room, uh, the moldings, and basically connect all of them into a 3D world. And uh, able they, they'll be able to communicate and um, being able to visit at the same time. Uh, all of this is going to be centered kind of like a game where the paintings are going to transform into puzzles uh, that you'll have to kind of like solve. Uh, uh, yeah, so I'll just quickly go through the video. Uh, well, due to COVID, we had to uh, implement another controller. Uh, we've chosen the PS4 controller for that. 
and um, well, this is how it, it is played. Well, obviously. So in this room that has been uh, 3D scanned, uh, we can uh, appreciate the artwork and uh, look at the moldings for now. They're, they're very disgusting, to be honest. But um, we're going to, I mean, as they've, they've been reduced and everything, they are kind of like slowish and uh, not. they don't look good, but I promise they'll, they'll look better in the future. <laughs> I think they look good. I mean, I was impressed. I, it makes me want to go visit this place or any which, museum. Which museum is that? <laughs> It's uh, Palazzo Madama in Turin. And obviously we've, we've been working with people there who've been providing the scans and yeah, it's it looks like a beautiful uh, uh, space. Yeah, it is. And and that, that, the yeah, so we can also have uh, people connecting. So uh, here we got the invisible man connecting um uh, with 3d glasses representing him and walking in the room we should have i really think we should have added a coat or something or a hat <laughs> version two, is, version is that two. In, yeah is that invisible enough or <laughs> maybe a, co a, co a covid mask oh that's a good one <laughs> I'll put the mask. I'll I'll, I'll keep that. <laughs> um, so yeah, and just for a bit of background, this is all developed uh, using Babylon JS uh, and uh, uh, basically using WebXR uh, in the background. And uh, here we can see the WebXR test API to use a headset and connect and play around and move as well. Uh, yeah, kind of like zooming in here. And again, all of this is to make uh, the room experience uh, accessible for anyone outside the museum. And yeah, well, that was the one of the UCs that we're working on. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. And I, I think the the interactive the interactive aspect is especially interesting to me about what makes this what 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 makes what's important about interact uh sorry immersive environments on the web so ada has been co-chairing the immersive web working group which has been producing the webxr spec which is you know being used in this in this scenario um we've been putting effort into the into the web into the immersive web stuff both from a standards perspective and also you know kind of building prototypes and doing developer advocacy around webxr and what's what's interesting one of the things anyway that's interesting about webxr about bringing immersive environments to the web is about um in involving multi involve, involving multiple people and the low barrier to entry basically like so anybody can rock up with their with their phone you know and uh and kind of like get start getting involved in this um in this scenario without having to download uh additional software without having necessarily to have fancy hardware without you know so it's a, it's it's a kind of low barrier to entry and then the interactivity element is i think really really cool so uh so yeah um i'm excited to see the invisible man grow a, a little bit more visible <laughs> well the, uh, that was deep <laughs> <laughs> definitely um, gonna definitely gonna ask, uh, oh sorry go ahead no no i was i was gonna switch tracks for a second and um uh gleb asked a question about pwas um so 
Yeah, I mean, PWAs have been a really, ever since I joined the team and we started kind of started the um, developer advocacy effort in, uh, in 2016, um, what PWAs, progressive web apps have been a key kind of like topic for us and a key, key area of interest. And um, we've been working with our, so, you know, Samsung have their own store, the Galaxy store. Um, and we had been working with them last year um, and, uh, and earlier this year about a plan to bring progressive web apps to the store. Um, so earlier this year, uh, I think or maybe it was late last year, we did a blog post. We did uh, some uh, presentations at Samsung Developer Conference about this. Um, one of the things that progressive web app developers have asked for is how can we get more visibility of our, how can we get distribution of our progressive web apps? So, um, and I think you know, the, it's one of the things that web developers in general have been asking for uh, asking to add to the web platform are things like monetization, app-like features like notifications and distribution and, uh, and uh, uh, visibility of their, of their applications, right? So we had hoped to be able to have a, a good story this year about adding progressive web apps to the, to the app store. And we were able to add a, a few progressive web apps to the app store um, and we are working with our colleagues in uh, that manage the App Store. Um, however, I there due to whatever um, strategy changes within the App Store itself, they've kind of put that on hold for now. It doesn't mean that that's not going to happen. It's just that uh, they're they're working on a new strategy for the for the Galaxy Store. Um, we're still working with them, and we hope to be able to launch progressive web apps at at scale at a, at a higher uh, number of, of apps, um, or as a core part of the store in 2021. But right now, we're not able to do it. So we're looking, we're trying to figure out other ways that we can help progressive web app uh, developers uh, get uh, visibility of their applications. Um, and uh, we hope to have some prototypes out there. Um, soon uh, to kind of show how we think uh, progressive web apps can be um, can be publicized um, can can get in front of users uh, more easily. Um, so I don't know if we can really talk more about that, but we have we have some some interesting ideas uh, that that we're working through there. So Ada, welcome. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, yeah, I don't think you could hear me before while I was on the train. Um, sorry, there were some logistical issues that meant I got stuck in the office for, for a while. But I'm back and um, with a device. Nice. So, yeah, very exciting. I can't wait to try it out. Um, I'm hoping Laura talks a bit about the ScreenFold API. Um, sometime uh, today. Um, but yeah, uh, developer advocate, been with Samsung for many years now. Um, I joined when Dan did, pretty much. Um, and um, yeah, I'm co chair of the immersive web group. So trying to bring like WebXR to the web to let people do AR and VR stuff. So you'll probably occasionally see me put out weird VR demos as I try out new things. Cool. And who hasn't introduced themselves? Laura, have you introduced yourself? I said my name and then I'm Santa today. I don't, I don't. <laughs> You're doing double. Not sure if, if that's valid. <laughs> well, what have you been working? What have you been? You're, first, first of all, you can be. Uh, you're a bit distracted because you're doing double duty as the uh, as the uh, whatever the producer of this stream, as well as uh, a participant in this stream. But um, uh, what have you, what have you been working on uh, um, this year that uh, that's exciting? 
Yeah, so uh, hi everybody, my name is Laura and it's going to be, let's say, one year and a half since I joined Samsung. Um, I've been working around the web and most of my career around JavaScript. So um, I was really excited to go into this area that is DevRel. And since the very beginning, I've started to work with progressive web apps. Um, doing my own research and um, start doing some more, um, let's say, real cases. Um, I was before I was researching, but I didn't put like any um, test or demo in in the real life. So uh, we've been doing a few demos, including Global Goals, the one that currently Lola is working on. And uh, thanks to that topic, I started to uh, research a little bit more uh, around web performance, um, service workers, and so on. That's, those are topics that I really like. And uh, since, let's say, a few months ago, um, I started to also research about uh, foldables and what's going on <laughs> with these new devices. And thanks to... Um, uh, I think the past weeks, and uh, I, I still have to pick up my device, but hopefully soon I can uh, start testing both devices. And um, the idea is to next year is going to be one of our main topics. And uh, I'm pretty happy to participate in this because it's like a, a mix of um, user experience, front end, and um, yeah, see, like in terms of innovation, how can be um, our uh, developer relations practice for um, developers in, into foldables? So I think Kenneth is around listening. Um, he was one of the uh, uh, owners of the explainer. Uh, we he was working with Diego, our old colleague, and into the foldable API. So, uh, yeah, so my idea would be to continue this work, especially next year. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing. So cool. I mean, I think that the one thing that I've been um, – I don't know what the word is – aware of, you know, uh, concerned about over the past, I don't know, five, six years, something like that. It's just the fact that we've had precious little, um, there's been a lot of innovation in handsets, but not that much innovation in terms of the industrial design of mobile devices. Um, and I'm really excited to actually see the folding the, what's happening with the folding fo foldable screens, foldable devices, um, multi-screen devices as well. Um, it's starting to seem like there's some real interesting innovation happening there. Um, and the and how so the question is how do we bring that to the web, right? And that's something that we started working on earlier this year. You mentioned as you mentioned, Diego uh, worked on did, did a lot of work on that. Um, where we're sad to see him go, but you know he's uh, he's happily ensconced in Microsoft now. So, <laughs> um, but you know the the Microsoft is a company that's doing stuff with this as well. Um, we're working with those companies with partners um, in the context of W three C now with Intel, uh, with Google to um, uh, to build out an API that makes sense uh, for, for foldable devices, um, for, for developers to be able to make good user experience that takes advantage of foldable screens. Um, and um, and uh, it's exciting to me that we, already that we already developed a test version of that API and that it's already in the beta uh, that we've launched. So any developers that wanna test it out can um, can you know activate that API um, in the beta? It's behind a flag right now, mm -hmm. um, and you can actually uh, play around with it 
and it's a, it's an it's a implementation of the of the of the draft API that we've submitted into the devices and sensors working group in W3C. To me, it's a great example of connecting together developer relations and advocacy work with our work in standards, um, putting it all together end to end. Uh, and then uh, hopefully getting a lot of feedback from the developer community about this particular API that we can then funnel back into the engineering process and into the standards process as well. Um, so yeah. Ada, what have you been working on? I mean, you mentioned WebXR. Um. So I recently made, um, I recently built a um, a little AR game where you fire basketballs at. Um, actually, I can just demo it to you right now. I've got it. I've got it here, um, and and I open it up in Samsung Internet and plug my phone into my computer. You've got fancy video uh, set up there. There you go. I do, so I can do stuff like this. Um, so a basketball demo. So I can um, go AR, enter AR. So this is in the latest Samsung Internet Beta. And then I can place it on the wall. And I just realized there was a, okay, I'm going to do this. This is embarrassing. I'm going to do this in Chrome because there's a feature it relies on, which we don't quite support yet, um, but soon. Um, whoops, my bad. Uh, which also I should do a way to make that work when there is no support for that particular feature. All right, so AR and then so the interface is using the WebXR DOM overlay API. So this is all HTML, the various buttons and stuff. And then if I can push this and then. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's just something I've been building recently. Um, and it showcases the hit test API as well, because that's what's allowing you to place that 3D object onto a real wall within your virtual AR environment. I just think that's so cool. That's right, yeah. And I can place it on the floor as well, but that's not super great for basketball. Um, no. I, next, I guess I need to make um, AR croquet. Um, and then I can play, you can place, actually that's a really good idea actually, I should just do that. So you can place the little croquet hoops on the floor and then hit a little AR ball through them. Hmm, I think I might do that. Uh, but anyway, I'm writing a blog post about this at the moment, like a very, very long detailed blog post about how I went into that. But I also live streamed the whole development. Like building that demo took me about four and a half hours and I uploaded the whole thing and edited it onto YouTube. Um, there is some swearing involved, so um, be warned. But in case you want to just have have me developing software on in the background, it's there. Well, you know, that's what you get when you come to Samsung Internet DevRel. It's raw DevRel, you know. <laughs> it's, it's mostly me being too lazy to to edit four and a half hours of video. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing the blog post. So if you haven't got the patience to watch all that, which I know I don't, then you can read the blog post instead. Laura, I love like the disco you've got going on behind you. I don't know how you're doing that. Yeah, um, it's, it's for real actually. <laughs> okay. Um so what what about me? 
<laughs> Should I say something that I've been working on? Yeah, what have you been working on? I don't know. Um, Tell us I about the tag. Yeah, one of the things. Oh, um, we got a question about the basketball game. Is that something that people can play around with right now? Yeah. Um, the we have a link to the chat, so I can um, I can you, reply. If you put it here, I mean, if you just put it in the yeah. in the I YouTube. You. Yes, yeah, in the YouTube. Ah. I've got to find the link to that. That's probably in our Slack, I guess, right? I've just, I've just posted it in this chat. I'm ah, great. That. Thank you. So, yeah, the URL for the basketball game is um, great. Pop out chat. It's ada.is slash basketball dash demo. And the source code is on my GitHub. Um, so. Hopefully I typed those correctly. But yeah, that's the source code. And there's like a more in-depth blog post coming soon. I don't see it yet in the, in the YouTube chat. But um, do I need to be moderated or something? No, you should be able to just type it. We'll get you that URL. Don't worry. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. nothing. <laughs> yes, we can see that. So you can see that, but you can't see the links. Maybe it's. Oh, yeah, maybe it's been caught in a moder moderation key. Oh, I see. Test you. Okay, good. Yeah, good. Awesome. Okay. And then. So um, you asked me what's going on in the tag. Yeah, Dan, what have you been doing? <laughs> what have I been doing? Well, I can say, like, um, the, some of the exciting stuff that has been going on in the tag is things like We've been spending an awful lot of time. So the tag, first of all, is the technical architecture group, which is a group that I co-chair in W3C. Um, and it's something that probably, when it comes to web standards, it's the thing that I'm putting the most effort into. Um, uh, you know, I also have been doing a bit of, of work on some other web standards areas as well. Um, but uh, but mostly most of my work when it comes to web standards and W three C, uh, lion's share of it uh, is uh, is in the tag. So what is the the tag? Uh, is a kind of um, and maybe somebody can put, well I can just say it's w three dot org slash tag. Um, uh, it's a kind of special group in W three C that does and uh, that does. Um, reviews of other people's work. I mean, that's one of the key things that we do. Um, and we uh, write findings. So when there's like a, um, when there's like a key issue on the web, uh, the tag will sometimes write a document that says the tag, the tag's opinion is this. One of the, one of the kind of like most, I would say influential findings that we've had um, going back a few years was uh, securing the web. So it was one of the doc one of the voices that was advocating very strongly for a move to HTTPS away from HTTP. I think this is a, a kind of well established now at this point. Um, but at the time in 2014, 2015, it was not very well established. And um, uh, so it was important to have kind of like a kind of a leadership group within W3C making this point that we really need to move to HTTPS. So, so since then, we've seen all, a movement for uh, all new features that are added to the web, especially those that have to deal with sensitive user data, um, should uh, should be um, using should be built on top of what's called secure context or using HTTPS. Um, so the other thing that 
the tag does is we write uh, documents. So there's in particular something called the uh, design principles, um, which is something that we've been spending a lot of time this year working on. And let me see if I can find the URL to it. Yeah, here we go. So if we take a look at the design principles, that work. Um, that's something called, we re renamed it this year, the web platform design principles. Um, ooh, I don't know if that's showing up in the, in the chat properly. Once again, it's, uh, it may be stripping it out because it's a link. Anyway, um, that's, uh, a document that talks about what, in some ways, what is the web? What's the differentiator of the web? What makes the web different from other platforms? Um, so things like the fact that it's a platform where the user's needs come first, uh, put the user's needs first uh, in front of the needs of uh, implementers, in front of the needs of web developers, in front of the needs of pure theoretical purity, or like the point two, which is it should be safe to visit a web page. So I think the web is pretty, is pretty unique out there because it's a platform where you can run other people's code arbitrarily, and you're pretty certain you're you know, you're 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 assured of some level of safety. Um, you can type any URL into your web browser, and it can start running code that that person has written. Um, so that assuredness of safety is kind of a core principle of the web and safety includes privacy. So we've been doing a lot of work in the tag about privacy reviews and pushing back. Somebody mentioned Fugu pushing back. Sometimes we are a member of project Fugu. Um, and we are, uh, we are, we're contributing, we're contributing into project Fugu. So Laura mentioned the, um, the web, uh, fold API, and that's something that we're contributing into the project Fugu. And we, we've also been participating in the Fugu discussions. Um, for those who don't know what Fugu is, it's kind of a, a project that was started by Google and Google and Microsoft and Intel or some of the organizations and Samsung or some of the organizations that's participating in it. And its its goal is to produce advanced, um, advanced web APIs, advanced, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, kind of um, very, very powerful web APIs, web APIs that can potentially pull data off of your device. Uh, one of the uh, example, like things like the clipboard API or the um, uh, being able to uh, pull data out of your uh, contact book, your address book. Uh, that's another thing that's proposed under Fugu. Um, so, Sometimes these APIs uh, come, you know, they're very powerful, but with great power comes great responsibility, right? I think somebody said. So you've got to be able to, um, uh, you've got to be able to design them in such a way that uh, that they do not compromise user privacy, but they still offer that that power that the developers want, um, and that's a conversation that uh, that the tag gets involved in because we're doing reviews of all these new APIs as they're coming through the design process. Um, and very often that that feedback that we give to the API developers will be, um, you really need to take a look at these privacy aspects. Uh, so so that's, a, in a way, that's, uh, that's also aligned with, you know, with Samsung's goals, by the way, because we're trying to make a point that one of the differentiators for Samsung Internet is privacy, and so we're trying to put a lot of energy into into privacy uh, and privacy related specifications and privacy related features um, this year as well. But yeah, and the tag that's kind of been a lot of the focus this year is is developing that um, design principles document, uh, which sits on top of something else called the ethical web principles, which is something that I worked on last year with Hadley uh, Beeman, who's another member of the TAG. Um, and that is a set of ethic ethical statements about the web um, that we, that we again, that we think 
are, are a way in which the web differentiates from other platforms. What makes the web the web? It is inherently a more ethical platform, and therefore it needs to be designed in that way. So making those design choices, making those choices during the design process of new APIs is one way in which we think we're trying to make a difference, um, make the web a better, make the web a better place, basically. Uh, thank you for coming to my TED talk. Sorry, what? Yeah, <laughs> there, there is a question for Ada about her project. So I'm gonna put it here. Well, you're you're muted, Ada. Oh, I'm not seeing the question. Uh, is it in the YouTube? Uh, in the stream yards. No, page. in the screen. It, anyway, it says, would it be possible to use AR heat yeah. test to create three D audio, revert from the walls? Like, yeah, you could, I guess. Like, you you could tell a user to um, to basically do hit test on all of the walls of their um, of the room that they're currently in, and then enter the material that the walls are made of, and then put that into something like um, oh gosh, what's the name of that really useful Google project? Anyways, it's a useful Google project that has a really great JavaScript library that would let that would accept that information. Oh, you'd also have to do the floor and the ceiling as well, um, and you'd put in that information into them. Um, so yeah, you could get really accurate audio reverb by doing um, that with the hit test. Um, I'd say it's probably only really worth it if you're if you have some kind of audio if you're if you're building an audio app where getting accurate audio reverb is something that you really want to do and is something the user is going to care enough about to manually calibrate it like that i mean it'll be quicker like you could just have to scan one wall scan another wall ceiling and floor the trickiness comes from um so if you noticed i placed the basketball hoop onto the poster that's over there and the reason I did that is because the way um, AR tracking works is that it looks for um, like individual image features it can pick out and track. So if we're just doing a plain white wall, it's gonna find it really hard to actually work out how far that wall away is from you. But by doing it onto that poster, it can get a pretty good idea of where it is. Um, so the user would probably also have to have lots of pictures on their wall to, to make it easy enough to use hit testing um, on it to measure where the different walls are. So yes, it's possible, but whether you want to and whether the user wants to is probably a totally different um, different question. Um, Ada, speaking of web audio, maybe you can share the most relevant link to the immersive Koi Pond experience that you produce, that you did uh, oh, in October. Yeah. That's actually a really good point. So the demo I did, um, which Dan is talking about, um, I think it's, maybe it's this. So I was gonna try a few URLs off the top of my head. Um, is it this Koi yeah. garden that glitched at me? That's the one. Um, Oh yeah. Um, so this demo, um, which I just pasted a link to, is one which I, um, I've now lost the chat. I'm really bad at this. Um, so yeah, this, um, I just posted a link to it into the, into the chat on YouTube. Um, so this uses spatial audio, um, Sorry, my camera turns off occasionally. Um, so I use this uses spatial audio for the piano note as they're placed around you. So whenever you see a ripple in the water, it's played a piano note at that at that place in space. 
And I'm going to find the source code for that because the way it works is kind of interesting. Um, and the source code, and it's not, it uses a library which Google did, which does like, so there is the panner node in web audio that, that has its own like um, HRTF and lets you do spatial audio, but it's good, but it's not like great. And so this one is like a third party one that's built on top of um, Wasm, I think. Um, or maybe it's just normal JavaScript in the in audio workloads. But anyway, it's really cool. Um, and I was just talking a lot whilst I tried to find this repository with the source code. Um, I think the Got it. it has this demo has the benefit of being the only example of like a web technology demo where the way that you experience it is stepping into the bath, right? <laughs> yeah, so I, I, it was inspired by one of the, um, uh, one of the team lab. Um, oh, and the name of the thing it uses is, re is Google's resonance audio, which is the probably, in my opinion, the best way to do spatial audio in the web today. Um, so, um, I went to this really cool team lab exhibit and there's in Tokyo and they have this room and you're standing in the room in like knee high water, like warm water and there's fish swimming around you and it's really cool and magical. And it was like a year after I'd gone to that event and I was really missing, um, missing travel because lockdown had been going on for quite a while at that point um and so yeah i built this with the idea that you put on the headset to see the fish and you stand in the bath to get the water effect and yeah it was kind of fun um i can't really suggest standing in a bathtub wearing a headset i mean it's like it's not a safe activity because you can't see and you're stood on a slippery surface. Samsung does not officially endorse this yes. use of AR and VR. But it is a, unless you're a trained standing in a bath professional. Unless you're a trained standards uh, professional, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, it was a fun experiment. Um, there's lots of interesting stuff going on in here. Like the VR navigation is done really well and kind of interesting. Um, it's all made with 3JS. And I think the source code is pretty accessible for this one. Um, like it's not it's not huge. Um, oh, and I made a contribution for 3JS for, um, for the, the mechanic that lets all the fish swim around in a very lovely organic fashion. So where does that bring us? What else, what else, what, what are we, what are we looking forward to in 2021? We have other questions. Yeah. Sir, besides like Alex. going to a restaurant. Um, I say I'm gonna quickly answer Alex's question. It's actually a good, yeah, good yeah, question. Go um, so his question is: Samsung Internet is based on Chromium, but it's always one to two versions behind Google Chrome. Is it possible to close the gap? And the answer there is not really. Um, uh, it the only way we could conveniently close the gap is if we were just like some thin wrapper around like a Chrome custom tab or something, but we're not, we're an actual fork of Chromium. Um, and so every time we upgrade the engine, it usually involves um, like merging in all the upstream changes into our own fork and merging them with our own changes we make to the browser, um, which is a significant amount of work. So um, the, the gap between the features the gap between the engines is kind of um, um, lets us have our own unique features into the browser. And if there are important features that developers are really, really um, strongly after, 
we can usually backport them in from a later version of Chrome. So for example, if you look at MDN and see what version of CSS Grid Sam uh, Samsung Internet got, you would see that it actually doesn't match up with the comparative version of Chrome because we put it in sooner than it would have gone in otherwise. So we do have that those kinds of options if we need to include developer features early. Um, but it does, but by having this little gap, it does give us a bit of breathing room for implementing our own features. Well, that's another point is that because of our relationship with it, well, not just because of our relationship with MDN, but aided, aided with our relationship or aided by our relationship with MDN, um, we spend time updating the MDN browser compat data so that we try and make sure that the information about what APIs can be used, what features, what web features can be used in uh, Samsung internet is always up to date um, with the latest versions that we're shipping. Uh, so that a lot of that work that's done. Um, there's a huge bunch of JSON data that um, powers that which we make pull requests to Ada is uh, intimately familiar with this process. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> it's work. It's a lot of work, but it's uh, but it 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 it, uh, it pans. You know, it, uh, it it has benefits definitely. Every t every time we do a release, I lose two days of productivity. <laughs> and we're trying to make that better. We'll try and make that better in the new year. That's that's a good thing to plan in the new year. Um, speaking of MDN, you know, we we had a good uh, we we, we that just this uh, just today the uh, MDN developer needs assessment has launched. Um, that's something else to take a look at. Um, it's why are we talking about this on the Samsung thing? Well, because Samsung are part of the MDN product advisory board. Um, and we have been for a number of years, along with Microsoft and Google, um, Coil. Um, we have uh, uh, Boku uh, is on there. Uh, Egalia also just joined the MDN product advisory board. Um, so there's a lot of uh, people that are involved with MDN um, and we've been working with the, those partners to uh, shore up support for MDN and in, in the in the previous months we've um, we're launching some stuff uh, that we can talk more about next year uh, that's helping to uh, to make to strengthen MDN as a cross browser independent, uh, editorial voice uh, for, um, uh, for for web documentation. Um, so that's something else that we've been doing a lot of work on this year and and uh, and I'm excited about what's coming next with with MDN actually. Um, but yeah, the we were also involved in developing and designing the uh, the MDN developer needs assessment survey and um, I will be able to talk more about that when I, have digested the information that has come out of it. Um, but uh, yeah. There are two other questions. Um, I just put it here. It seems like the Galaxy Store is something that people is asking a lot. Mm. And Alex, Alexi is asking if there's any ETA when PWA in Galaxy Store will be available in Russia and worldwide. Uh, I don't have an ETA. Um, we're hoping uh, that it happens sooner rather than later in 2021. Um, and at the same time, we're also trying to work on some other solutions to help PWA developers get more visibility of their PWAs. So uh, that's kind of where things stand there. What was the other question? Easier question? <laughs> the, uh, this Samsung one is, other... yeah, this one would be in my wish list sometime. Samsung Internet for desktop, why not? Ah, 
So, have you heard? The, have you heard about Dex? <laughs> Dex lets you plug in your device into um, um, into a HDMI port. Like, hopefully this will work because I've got it plugged into one here. Oh, it does. Look at that. So here we go. I have a desktop um, operating system running off my Android phone. And the Samsung browser is the um, is the browser on that. So yeah, Samsung Internet Beta and a terminal and other things. I'm like, I don't really have like a proper mouse or keyboard plugged in at the moment, so I can't really do anything. But that's pretty cool. Um, so it's, I think it's notable as well that a lot of the features that have come in with 13.0 were things like better tab UI and support. And those are things that are most important when you have this kind of desktop interface. Yeah, so it's a, uh, it's, that's one answer. That's one part of the answer, definitely. I mean, I don't think there's no plan currently to make a uh, Windows or Mac OS version of Samsung Internet. But through DeX, uh, we definitely feel like that's part of the Samsung Internet experience is the uh, uh, desktop, the desktop UI through through uh, through that kind of desktop platform. Well, I heard I heard that Microsoft is working on some kind of uh, uh, converter to open APKs through the. Um, through your computer, so that might be also interesting to look at. This is only rumors, uh, that's all. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, yeah, no, the, the Microsoft have been doing a lot of good stuff with uh, progressive web apps uh, recently, so I'm not surprised at, the, at that. Um, very cool stuff. So shall we talk about 2021? I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, come on. 2021, what are we looking forward to? Kevin, you start off. I start off. Well, uh, hopefully I'll be able to talk more about the projects I'm working on. Uh, in 5G tours, maybe have some blog posts out. And uh, I'd love to get more involved into the ScreenFold APIs and um, and going back a bit to work on uh, progressive web apps. That's really something that I've been missing in 2020 and really looking forward for that uh, in 2021, yeah. Well, hopefully it will be better this year. <laughs> Sunshine is coming. Mm. How about you, Dan? What are you excited for in 2021? Going to a restaurant, you know? <laughs> yeah, 2022, that's going to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just postpone. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm hoping that um, we do have a bit of normalization next year where we can actually start doing a bit more in person, um, uh, you know, and seeing people from more than just the torso on up. Um, uh, the, um, we started early this year, uh, the idea of doing developer office hours meetups in London, uh, where we actually like had a few of these where we sat uh, at a desk at Samsung KX uh, space in King's Cross. Um, and, and we encourage developers to come join us, um, test on the latest phones, uh, come ask us in person about things. Um, we then, you know, once the once lockdown happened, we kind of moved that into a virtual office hours and we ran a number of very, I would say very successful virtual office hours things, but you can't physically Part of the point of a office hours like that is to physically test on a on a real device that you might not have uh, in your hands. So I'm hoping that we can 
uh, start doing that in uh, in 2021 at some point um, once uh, once things get uh, calmed down a little bit. Um, I think I'm excited to. I uh, mentioned privacy as a as a core topic for us in both from a Samsung perspective, Samsung Internet perspective, and also from a W3C perspective. So um, I kind of feel like doubling down on that in uh, is important in 2021, or will be con continue to be important. Um, how we design new specifications, uh, how we think about new technologies when they're added to the web, and and how we surface them to the end user. Like one of the cool things that uh, that we did late this year, again, I think it launched with 13.0, was the um, uh, better UI around um, permission requests for things like notifications. So notifications, push notifications are something that I've always been a big fan of. Um, they are problematic in that some websites have decided that now that push notifications exist, it means the minute that you come to a web page or the home page of a website, the first time, uh, the first thing that they're going to do is ask you, um, "Would can I send you push notifications?" Or more, even more worryingly, they'll try and game your response to that. We even saw some websites putting a graphic around that um, around that permission request, saying, "Prove you're a human." By clicking OK to this re to this response, you know, which is a kind of uh, dark. I mean, dark pattern doesn't even go, doesn't even capture that. It is definitely a dark pattern. It goes beyond dark pattern, and we've and that's something that people were seriously doing. So, the browser can do more to protect users from that, and that's something that we have been doing. Uh, but I think that we, as the web community, need to get more serious about. You know, it's it's that's that kind. We've seen that kind of pattern emerge before with pop-ups, um, and you know, pop-ups aren't a thing anymore because browsers are now uh, protecting users from that. And and I think the the same thing goes. The same thing will probably go with uh, together with um, with with overreaching user tracking, user tracking that. Uh, that makes especially user tracking that makes use of technologies unsanctioned tracking that makes use of web technologies to fingerprint users even if they try and close their uh reset their browser or close their uh reset their cookies or, or what have you um so uh, again uh that's something that i'm really happy to see that we have our own um cookie smart uh smart anti-tracking technology um but uh, and uh, through plugins, you can uh, you can uh, block trackers and block ads. But uh, I'd like to see even more of that uh, in 2021. Um, I think that we really need to rebalance the uh, rebalance things when it comes to the advertising industry, so that we end up with healthy a healthy advertising industry um, that is not uh, you know overreaching for for um, for user data, and again, br I think browsers can do something there, and I think how we design the specifications themselves uh, is something that we also need to pay attention to. So those are some things I'm looking forward to in, in 2021. Lola. Yeah, so on the topic of privacy, um, something I'm actually quite looking forward to, which I guess has already kind of started, um, is the global privacy control um, and new privacy standard proposals and stuff like that that like a bunch of different orgs are like getting behind um, and it's basically a way to you know say yes it's a way for users to like get in control of how they want to be tracked or not tracked um, by toggling a um, setting on their browser um, and, you know, websites should have to listen for that. So in the same way, like pop-ups and stuff are not like that big of a deal anymore because they don't really encounter them because browsers are going to protect 
are going to the extra lengths to protect users against them. This is another thing with tracking as well. Um, and I'm really interested to see, you know, um, more on that. I'm also interested to see how that develops. Um, so like, for example, and this is not like necessarily like a 2021 thing, but just like a long-term future thing. But like, for example, you know, being able to, um, regardless of device, if I have like a, a Brave browser on my phone and I have a Brave browser on my um, desktop, being able to have like a global control that says, I don't want tracking, you know, on regardless of the device I'm on, um, or I, I don't mind this site tracking me, but I don't want this site tracking me and like things like that. Um, that's but that's like more of a like long long term than a 2021 but i am super excited to see um more more uh developers thinking about um how they can keep users safe in this way um because i think within the developer community once it quote unquote works then you kind of just leave it to do its thing um and i think even uh, features like this kind of redefine what working means. Like, what does it mean for your website to work or for your product to work um, if it's not necessarily in the best interest of users, you know? So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, in terms of, like, personal work I'm working on, um, I'm looking forward to getting more involved with web standard stuff and MDN stuff, um, which is something I'm going to be doing more in 2021. Um, I'm not sure like how much I can talk about, but I will hopefully be getting more involved with some NDN stuff definitely. And I am kind of like on the hunt for <laughs> which web APIs interest me the most that I may be able to like um, contribute to in some in some kind of way, you know? Uh, so yeah, I think that's that's me. You you gotta pick a victim. Oh, this is how we do it in stand-up. Stand -up. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, Laura, you go. Hey, well, for me, I agree with Alexi. Um, uh, I really like PWAs, and I'm interested more about what what's going to happen in terms of roadmap, right? Uh, this past year, including the end of 2019, when um, uh, it was available to have PWAs in the Galaxy Store. So it takes a little bit of time to do future decisions and check how did it work, for example, in the US? Is it going to be worldwide? So I'm really interested and keen to see where PWAs are going to be, right? And uh, thanks to that, also trying to interact more with developers that um, are actually interested in PWAs. Uh, besides that, in terms of technology, I'm also excited to start participate, participating in everything that is related with foldables, uh, especially because, um, um, like, since a few months ago, I started to listen, uh, but now we had the chance to uh, actually participate, create demos, thanks to some of the devices, and, um, yeah, so I'm excited to see which kind of cool stuff we can do and also how developers can um, implement um, foldables. Um, in my personal journey, I think uh, that it would be interested to see how the events are going. I would like to see more in-person events. Um, it, it, that's what I like most. But anyway, if that's not happening, um, I, I'll probably be more in streaming or doing different ways to test how we can reach out to developers. So yeah, that's my um, idea about 2021. Besides, start traveling a little bit more, if that's OK. <laughs> going, going to the airport, that's it. <laughs> so I choose um, Ada. All right, so what I'm looking forward to for next year. Well, for me personally, there is a ton of stuff coming through the WebXR device API. There's loads of really cool new features um, that are 
being developed both in standards and some which will hopefully land on devices uh, throughout the next year. There's also, I'm sure, going to be a whole new variety of AR hardware um, um, from all kinds of different companies. Um, and I'm looking forward to just seeing the way the AR and VR industries evolve over the next year, I think. I'm expecting big things. Cool. I thought of another thing I'm I'm uh, excited about for 2021 too. I'm excited about changing my my Zoom background, right? Like uh, I put together this uh, space station, the Lego space station uh, earlier this year, uh, you know, because I felt like I needed something, uh, you know, uh, interesting in my Zoom background. It was really boring back there. Um, so now I've got something new uh, that I'm working on. This is not a product endorsement, but my my project for uh, my project for uh, for for Christmas is uh, putting this together. So yeah, <laughs> that looks amazing. One thousand eighty-seven pieces. That's the pieces. Yeah, that in March. You're gonna see in a new. March. You're going to see a new, but yeah, you see me in my, I'm not, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe that wraps it up. Shall we close off? Any parting, parting words? I think there's one more question in the in the YouTube channel. Yes, indeed. From Glenn. So we have some of these already. Web Bluetooth, Kevin mentioned it, it or maybe I think you mentioned it, Kevin. Um, it's part of one of the demos or one of the use cases that we're working on for this uh, for the five G tours project. Um, actually. Uh, but we've been we've been supporting web Bluetooth for a while. Um, it's one of those APIs that I'm personally excited about. I'm excited about the idea of um, connecting the web with devices, with other kinds of devices, web USB, web serial, um, being able to provision an Arduino or a microcontroller you know, from the web um, so that you don't need additional hardware. I think it's a, it, it uh, lowers the bar, lowers the barrier to entry for some of those things. Um, that's very exciting. Um, but we don't, you know, we're, we're not actively working on web serial, web USB right now for, for Samsung internet. It's just a matter of priorities. Um, geolocation, we are already have uh, definitely um, and, you know, um, but, uh, and, and, you know, Samsung have been an early adopter of service workers. In fact, that was one of the APIs that we, Ada mentioned some APIs that we back port from, from uh, future versions of, uh, or not future versions, but more recent versions of Chromium. Um, going back to 2016, that was one of the APIs that we were involved in the development of. Um, and it's one of the ones that we backported. So uh, you can count on new sem uh, new progressive web apps features like progressive like um, service worker uh, uh, innovations and you know things having to do with um, push notifications and that kind of thing. Uh, uh, content um, synchronization uh, to be things that Samsung internet puts a, puts a focus on, definitely. Um, um, badging those, as well as something interesting. Go ahead, Ada. For those APIs though, like you asked about getting them to work in the background, that is a terrifying prospect for the web, just for the record. Like, uh, web USB may be okay, because at least it's like clear you're using it because there's a, a wire plugged into your device. But like geolocation API and web Bluetooth API, like if they're just running in the background, could could be used for um, tracking you. 
Yeah, is, yeah. No, it's definitely one of um, that's that's a good example. Web Bluetooth. So Bluetooth scanning is one of the ones that's coming out of Fugu, and again, that's one of the ones where I've had a lot of discussions with the people that are working on that API about. Well, how do you make sure that this is not going to be used by, for instance, advertisers to bring the web advertising model into the real world, so that you start to get advertising based on around the people that you're around. I mean, if if you're if you're one of the people that lives in a country like the UK where where we have the um, NHS COVID tracking app, then you'll be aware that you know it, that's made everybody aware of kind of like the power of of this kind of like um, background tracking of Bluetooth signatures around you. Um, I think there are certain use cases like COVID tracking where we're, where people are reasonably okay with, with the you giving up some of their privacy in order to have that kind of feature. Um, as long as there are a lot of privacy controls and um, assuredness around it, but uh, giving any old web developer the uh, power to do that, I think is is definitely problematic. Yeah, totally, totally agree, Ada. Um, okay, I think it might be time to go. It's we've been on for for 90 minutes i think that's what we said we were going to do so it's been really good been very successful it was kind of a kind of a experiment just to to do this kind of live stream also you get a taste of what our normal daily stand-ups are like <laughs> so <laughs> um we are on Twitter at, at Samsung Internet. We are, if you go to samsunginter.net, that will redirect you to the homepage for the new homepage for Samsung Internet, which is part of the developer.samsung.com website. Um, thanks to Kevin's good work. Um, <laughs> you will, uh, uh, you can find us on GitHub um, at Samsung Internet. Um, and uh, we're always open to answer questions. Uh, you, our DMs are open on Samsung Internet on Twitter, um, so feel free to drop us questions there. Um, and I think that's it. I think we're going to say goodbye. And happy holidays. Happy holidays. Bye, everyone. everyone. See you in the new year. Yeah. No.